This next guest is really important to me because uh, I went to Kick last year for uh, Hack Week and saw firsthand what they're doing and what they're building with bots. And uh, when we were forming up this idea to have this conference, uh, you know, I knew first off that I had to bring somebody in from Kick to talk about this stuff, and I knew I had to go big and aim really high with it. And you know, the Kick team is incredible, and they've they've really helped. Uh, put this together in a lot of ways, like, the, and been a big inspiration to me personally when it comes to the bot thing. So please welcome, uh, we have Ted Livingston, the CEO of Kick, here with uh, Kurt Wagner, and we're going to hear these guys talk. Looking forward to it. I'll give you some mics. Hello. Hi, everybody. Ooh. We'll figure that out the uh, appropriate volume here. Um, thank you all for being here. We are uh, pretty excited. Ted and I have had chats like this for a couple years now, but never on stage. Yeah. This, this is, is this is exciting. So this is a behind this. This is what our normal conversations are like, but we're going to do it in front of people. So we'll see how that yeah, goes. Usually we're facing each other, but this is okay. Nice little barrier. Um, so. There's a lot of different things that, that obviously I want to get to. And, and by the way, we're going to talk for about 20 minutes, uh, and then we're going to open it up. So for those of you who are eager to ask Ted a question, please sit on those. We're going to try and get to as many as we can uh, after this. Um, but let's, let's maybe set the stage here, right? So we're talking about bots. Bots are pretty new. Uh, there's a lot of potential, but maybe they're not quite there yet. But you've been thinking about bots for a really long time. So Walk me through when you kind of first started thinking about bots, not just a kick, but just you know personally as well. So the interesting thing about me is I've been in mobile a very long time. I actually worked at BlackBerry in 2007 before the iPhone came out. Uh, and I left there, and I started kick about eight years ago. And we had this idea that chat was going to be a really big thing. And within chat, chat would one day become a platform. You know, users would be spending all their time there, and other apps and other experiences would want to plug into a messenger. And so we've been actually working on this problem for seven years now. We launched our first API, Apps That Kick, uh, very similar to what iMessage just launched uh, a week ago or two weeks ago. What Facebook launched two and a half years ago, we actually launched five and a half years ago in July 2011. And so we've been working on this idea of chat as a platform, first with native apps, then with web apps, and now with bots for a really long time. And we've been working on bots for the last three years, and it was, it was sort of this crazy moment of, OK, we were building web apps, but it wasn't quite right. And then there was this comment like, what if apps could talk to you? And it was this like light bulb moment. But at the time, everybody thought we were pretty crazy. And so for me to be here today with all of you, and this is a conference for bot developers, like I, I just couldn't, I couldn't miss that. So it's a huge thank you to Eric and Ben and Shlomo for putting this together. It's really cool for me to be on stage with all of you talking about bots. So what changed, though, right? So you, you have been thinking about this for a while. Like, What was the catalyst that made an event like today possible? Like, Is there something? in the last year? Uh, was it Facebook saying, we care about bots? Like, is that what, what got this whole thing rolling, or what changed? I think the thing that changed is developers realized that mobile apps were no longer a thing. Uh, I think that's the first part. You know, Everybody's building apps, and that was great for a while, and tons of growth. And then we got to this point where now nobody's downloading mobile apps anymore. So the latest status is over half of smartphone users in the US download zero new apps. So I think that was the first big part of it. Everybody's like, OK, well, if we can't build apps anymore, what are we going to build? So I think that's the first part. And I think the second part is momentum just sort of hit this critical mass around, wait a second, if everybody's spending all their time in chat, could that become the next platform that developers could build for to deliver experiences to consumers? So, But bots live inside of apps right now, right? So it so you still need an app to kind of house these bots at the moment. Um, do you see that ever changing? Or is it you know people are no longer downloading new apps, but they already have the apps that will ultimately house you know, the things that the people in this room are building? The killer part about bots to me is three things. You don't need to download anything. You don't need to create a new account. And you don't need to learn a new interface. 
And so to me, that's the, you know, technologies were always layering new things on top of old things. And this is, everybody has messengers. If we could find a way to deliver software through them, they'd have these huge advantages. Now that said, I do think it's early. Uh, bots versus apps have a huge advantage when it comes to, there's no friction. But when it comes to delivering a really rich experience, I sort of compare it to the browser 20 years ago. You know, the browser, when it first came out, websites is just sort of what color text do you want on what color background. And that's all you could really do. And people looked at that and they said, oh, this is a stupid platform. It's really only good for research papers. And they were right, but they were also wrong. Because the thing they miss is that the browser, while well, it was very basic in the experience it could deliver, it had a huge advantage when it came to friction. You just open the app you already have, you type in a couple characters, and you get the experience right away. And I think bots are going to go through a similar progression. You know, today, they look pretty basic, but they have such a friction advantage. No new app to download, no new account to create, no new interface to learn that platforms like Kick and others are going to deliver more and more tools to developers to build these richer and richer experiences. To where one day, we think it will be sort of like the web versus PC apps, people won't really download apps anymore. And so uh, Kick opened its bot store in April. Uh, I believe you have you know, 150 or so bots in the app store, but thousands of developers are testing their bot ideas on Kick. Uh, what have you found seems to be resonating with people right now? Because I would agree, I, I don't have a lot of conversations with regular people who say, oh my gosh, you gotta try this bot, right? There's, there hasn't been, in my opinion, one killer bot just yet. So what seems to be working and, and also what is not working that you've seen? When people come to chat, they're looking to do one of two things. They're looking to find more chats or they're looking to have better chats. And so we see, we see bots that focus on one of those two things do really well. Uh, so for example, we have this bot called the Roll Bot. Uh, the username is Roll, R-O-L-L. -L. And it was built by two guys actually from Kick in their spare time for fun. I didn't even know it was happening. And I just heard that that bot went zero to half a million users on Kick in a matter of weeks and that 95% of their users were from, were from users spreading it to other users. So I think that's, and the way Rollbot works is, it helps you make decisions in groups. And it's really funny, so it's really basic. Like You're like in a chat, you just say at roll, who should pay for dinner tonight, and it will help you decide that. And just that simple functionality has allowed it to spread virally through groups. So I think that's about making conversations better. The other one is we have apps that try to help you create more conversations. So there's a chatty McChat face bot. It's on Kick and it's on Facebook Messenger. And it's doing really well. And they're seeing tons of traction on Kick, not so much on Facebook Messenger yet. But that's one where they're helping people find new chats. So I think both those work. What doesn't work, and I think this is very important, I think the biggest misconception right now is that bots, chat bots, are about chat. You have all these companies that have been working on AI and natural language processing for so long, investing so much money and so many engineers, that finally there's a place they can use it. What we are seeing is any bot that does not always have suggested responses on the keyboard, so you know those buttons there that sort of guide you what to do next, just simply do not work. We have yet to see a single bot that focuses on just freeform input work. So people need, people need prompting as to what to respond. Yeah, so the, our first version of our bot platform two years ago was actually a very basic rules-based, keyword-based platform. So you, know, you go in, you set up your bot, you're like, okay, if I see these keywords, say one of these things. If I see those keywords, say one of those things. And then we did a bunch of user testing, and we looked at the data. Teenagers would come in, they would stare at the blinking cursor they're like, I don't know who this person is. I don't know what I should say. What should I say? And we'd push them. We're like, I don't know. You got to say something. Say something. And so they would swear at the bot, and then they'd see how it reacted, and then they'd leave. So I think this is the key thing about what's not working. AI is a great technology. It's going to have a big impact on the world. But it's not the killer application for bots. In fact, we think it holds back most bots that we see it in. 
What bots are about is simply a better way to deliver a software experience. You build something, it's no download, no account creation, no learning curve. Find a very simple problem that you can solve for a user, and then make it very simple for that user to flow through that experience, and then to then spread it virally with their friends. So I, I want to push back just a little bit on the idea that people want more conversation. And they very well could. I don't do research on that. I assume you guys probably do. I'm guessing you're not just making that up. But when I think of what I'm looking for in a bot, oftentimes I think, OK, I don't want to pick up the phone and make a phone call. I don't want to have to go to the, the inter internet and you know Google something and then go through that. Like, I want to actually minimize the amount of work. I want to have fewer uh, interactions, right? Like that's what a bot, in my mind, kind of does, is it simplifies things. So I guess how do you balance uh, you know, giving people more chats without overwhelming them, right? Because it would seem like a bit of a hassle if I have 50 different brands that are messaging me all the time. What I meant by that was not people want to have more chats with bots. It's that people want to have more chats with other people. And that bots could facilitate that happening. Now, this is something that is unique about Kick. You know, if you open up your phone and you go to the App Store, if you're on iPhone, you'll see Kick in the top 50 free overall apps. If you open up Android, it'll be in the top 20 overall free. And people look at that, they're like, what? Kick is here and it's been here for that long? Like, why is that? And I think the key thing that makes Kick different, it's the only messenger at scale that gives you complete control over your identity. So it's not tied to your phone number, it's not tied to your social profile. And in a world where teens are spending more and more time online, two thirds of teens have made a friend online, a third of teens, when you ask them, how often do you hang out with your friends in person outside of school, say almost never. So like, I hang out with people in person at school and then purely online outside of that. These teens need a very simple, safe way to connect with the people they meet there. And so when I talk about bots being very successful on Kick and helping you connect with other people and have more chats, it is really around that. Teenagers do use Kick to connect with new people, go into new communities. So that may be more specific to Kick. Do, do you find that uh, bots that succeed on Kick tend to be more on the entertainment? side of things versus the utility side of things? Or what is the breakdown from your, from your seat? I don't think there's a rule there yet. We've actually been pretty surprised by what bots work and what don't. You know, if you had asked me if the robot would work, I'd be like, no, that's not going to work. But it did. Uh, another bot that has done really well recently is the CNN bot. You know, you think of CNN like, CNN, those guys can't innovate. They have built a really good bot on Kick. It's totally different than the bot that's built on Facebook Messenger. It's built by a different team. But I find myself, when it messages me, I actually really like it. What are, so, what are they doing? Like what, so they, what makes they, it great? They, they take very timely events. So for example, the, you know, the Olympics are opening tonight. Do you want to take a walk around Rio with us and we'll show you around? I'm like, OK, I, you know, again, suggest a response as I hit the button. And then it's like, hey, where do you want to go? Do you want to see the beaches, or do you want to go up into the mountains, or what do you want to do? And I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm like chatting with a friend almost, but I'm just clicking, and it's showing me around Rio. They did a very similar thing with the debates the other night. Um, live coverage of the debates, choose your own adventure. So I think it's stuff like that, where it's really simple, it's choose your own adventure, it's delivering value, and it's timely and relevant that bots do really well at. Uh, I think the speaker right before us was talking about this, and I apologize, I was ducking into the green room, so I missed the full thing, but I want to talk a little bit about where these bots are going to live. Um, so I think there's two ways that this could go, right? There's like the open web way, where bots are going to live on a dozen different messaging services, and developers are going to be building for all of them. And then there's the, the, the way that we think about mobile today with mobile apps, which is there's Android and there's iOS. Do you ultimately see two or three big winners here? Or do you think that these bots are going to be all over the place? So at Kick, what we hope happens, what we say is we think chat is the new browser and bots are the new websites. And what we mean by that is, 
our, our vision for the future, the way we hope it plays out, is as a developer, you can write a bot once, and then it can work in a bunch of different chat apps. And today, that works, right? You write a bot. It's all back-end code. And so instead of pointing your server at Kik, you can point it at a different messenger, and that all works. And that's very much like the web. You know, Amazon.com works in Google Chrome. It works in Safari. It works in all the browsers. So that's one way it could play out. But the other way it could play out is like what's happening in China, where there is one chat platform and one chat platform only, which is WeChat or Weixin. And so there are more bots put on WeChat every day than there are websites put on the internet. So said another way, WeChat is the internet in China. It's this next platform. It's the way that consumers engage with businesses. And they're the only platform. It's winner take all. I don't think it's going to play out that way in the West. Because, because we, didn't, we already had SMS but free, the Messenger space is much more fragmented. You, know, you use Facebook Messenger to keep in touch with, you know, for me, my grandmother um, and other people. And people use Kik because it's, it's the opposite. It's because it's such a lightweight identity, you can't see all your updates and whatnot. So I think at its base, it will continue to be very fragmented. And I think that will be great for developers because you'll, it won't, like, you know, you talk about Android iOS, like, thank goodness there are two. Like, imagine there was only one, and they're like, oh, yeah, 30% for in-app purchase? We're going to take 40% now. What are you going to do about it? So I, I think it will play out like the internet, uh, where there'll be a bunch of chat apps, and then you as a developer can take your bots anywhere. So that, that does require some user buy-in, though, right? Um, you mentioned WeChat works in China. Uh, there's a, a, you know, Line works in Japan. Uh, there's not a lot of people, I would argue, in the U.S. who think of their chat app being the portal to the rest of the Internet. How do you change that perception? Like, or will that ever change, right? Is this something that's going to take 10 years? Is it going to take 20 years? Or are we all going to be using chat as our portal to the Internet in the next six months? Like, what, what needs to happen there? Like most things in technology, I think chatbots will be slowly at first and then all at once. A lot of people ask me, OK, bots, I get it. People aren't downloading mobile apps anymore. And yeah, I, I see that advantage. You don't have to download anything. You don't have to create an account. You don't have to learn how to use it. But what's the killer bot? And we're actually, the good part is now, like if we were doing this conference two months ago, I might not have a good answer to that. But now we're actually starting to see things like CNN bot and Rollbot actually get good traction. But we're still, it hasn't, it's not pervasive in society yet like it is in China. And the question is why? And I think the answer is any good platform has three key pillars, build, grow, monetize. And when you think about what bots are really good at, it's that they allow you to instantly interact with the world around you. For the first time ever, you could walk into, the, into a restaurant, see a chat code, and in one wave of your phone, you get the app, you get an account, you know how to use it, and you can order food. And the food comes over, you pay for it, you just walk it at the end. To make that experience work, and that, you know, that's the dominant experience that's happening in China, this offline commerce, you need build, you need grow, and you need monetize. And so we try to show a little of that today with the coffee bot. If you haven't experienced it, you should try it. But all it's going to take is for that experience to show up in one restaurant, and two restaurants, and then 10, 100, 1,000, and then all of a sudden, it will just, it will look like it was, it's a chat-powered world. Sure. So snow, snowball effect, sure. And I, I, I get that. I'm wondering how you get it in that first restaurant, right? Like, here, it, we all are here because we have some interest in bots. So seeing a QR code at the coffee thing, like, that doesn't, that makes sense, right? We're here for that reason. How do you bring that out of this environment and into an environment that is, you know, the quote-unquote real world? So I think the last piece to make all that work is payments. Um, if bots are killer at offline transactions, it's pretty hard to use a bot to order food or order a train ticket or order a movie ticket if you can't charge the user sure. money at yeah. the end. And so I think that's the last piece. That's why I'm really excited, is that it feels like we're at the cusp of that. Facebook just announced that they're going to be doing payments. You know, we're working on stuff as well. And once that last piece is in place, that's where I think you'll start to see a lot of growth. And I think, I think it's like the App Store. You know, for the first year, 
people on an iPhone were building apps, and they were, you know, if we look back, they were all sort of gimmicks. Like, you know, you could play with fish in a pond, you could create a fart app. <laughs> and it's like, well, that's cool, but stupid. But it wasn't until in-app purchase came out that people, that first developer, made a million dollars. And when they did, that's when all the talent, all the investment started pouring into the space. And I think that's going to happen with chat soon. And that's where I think all of you have a big advantage is you're, it's almost like you're building for the iPhone before anybody knew it would be a thing. If you ask me what's your certainty that chat is going to be the next once a decade platform, I would say to you 99%. I am completely convinced that chat is going to be the next platform. We're seeing it in China. We're seeing it internally at Kick. We're working with developers. And you guys, you get to be just before the rest of the world realizes that. And to me, that's super exciting. And so you see uh, basically a monetization happening similar to how we've seen it in mobile apps, right? Like I attach my credit card to Kick, and then I can make in bot purchases perhaps and what Trademark. advertising yeah. like what like are we going to see basically mobile apps monetization strategy just implanted here onto the bot scene yeah i think it will be similar like you either do transactions whether that's for physical goods or virtual goods or you sell attention through advertising and i think as the ecosystem builds up and this is where we hope it plays out like the web you'll see a bunch of providers of tools to do both of those two things. So if you're a developer and you want to do advertising in your bot, you shouldn't have to implement that from scratch, go out and sell New York and all these places, hey, advertise in our bot. Somebody else should make another bot that helps you do that. And that's one of the cool things we've done on Kick is we've allowed bots to talk to each other. So we said, hey, you know, bots should do one thing and one thing really well and keep it simple and, and grow it virally. But then it's like, well, if my bot can only do one thing really well, what happens when I need to add other functionality? And so we've actually, through mentions, and this is a key feature that Roll uses, to call in not just other users, but other bots. So you could imagine a world where there's an advertising bot that, hey, you want to get the next level in this game? Either I could call a payment bot to help you facilitate the payment, or I could call an advertising bot and you got to watch a video ad. What do you want to do? And so I think this is where the ecosystem really starts to get going and all these pieces start to fall into place. Um, I want all of you guys to be thinking of your questions. I got probably two more for Ted here and then we'll open it up to other people. Um, but I want to touch on that, that advertising element. And you know, Google just came out with Allo. We were talking about it briefly before we came on stage. For those who don't know, it's like a AI powered chat client, I suppose. Um, one of my critiques of Allo is that it felt a little invasive, right? There's this AI that is literally watching everything I'm typing. Uh, it's recommending things in the background. It just doesn't, like, chat is such a private experience for a lot of people still. Is there at all a concern of trying to bring monetization and businesses and all of that into an environment that people are used to having as a personal space, right? There's not much of the internet that's personal and private anymore. I would argue messaging is still somewhat that space for people. So how do you, you know, see that playing out? This is where I question Allo. Like chat is a super private place, and so you have this idea of like, Google is literally watching every conversation you have and doing machine learning on it, a lot of people are like, no thanks. But I don't think that that is required to make successful bots. And what, what we do at Kick, what other platforms do is we encrypt the pipe. So between the user and the other person or between the user and the other bot, we don't look at that. But you as a developer, you get to see all that data. You get to see all that information. It's just like, and the user understands that. Like, if I'm talking to my friend, I know they could be sitting there just screenshotting every single thing I say. And so there's a, a, a transfer and analogy to bots. Like, the CNN bot is sitting there screenshotting everything you say, and you know that. And it's no different than the web. I go to a website. I go to Amazon.com. I know they're recording everything I'm doing. But the browser surrounding that, whether it be Chrome or Safari, isn't looking at it. And so I think it's all going to work. 
Last question here before we open it up. Uh, I kind of want to jump back to where you were talking about AI, right? AI is kind of overrated, perhaps, at the moment. Um, I think that, and, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts. So Facebook came out F8. They announced, you know, made a big splash about they were going to have a bot store and a platform and all that. Um, I think a lot of people, because of that, had this expectation that they would instantly be able to open up Messenger and have a human-level conversation with a robot, right? It was just like, oh, yeah, we're there. That perception, I think, turned some people off of some of the early bots, right? They realized, okay, it's not quite that advanced. Maybe this isn't as cool as I thought it was going to be. Do you think that hurt kind of the bot industry more broadly, that there was this expectation that it was going to be, uh, I don't know, more advanced than it really was? Or is that just, you know, typical rollout in your mind? I think AI is hurting the experiences that developers are delivering to users. A lot of people are saying, listen, I spent all this time building out my AI. I don't care if it makes the experience worse, I'm using it. And most of the bots I see that use AI with that blinking cursor that the user is staring at don't work. And so, you know, you asked me earlier, why do you think bots are happening now? And a big part of it is Facebook threw their hat in the ring. And when I think about, as a similar question, well, why is everybody so hung up on AI? You get a similar answer. It's because companies like Google and Amazon and Microsoft are pushing it. Why? Because they want AI to be a required component to win this race. Because if it is required, it's going to take a lot of engineers and a lot of money. And hey, good news, we're one of five companies that have those two sure. things. Yeah, they're in a good position, basically, to capitalize on They're in on a that. great position. But who is no longer talking about AI? Facebook. Facebook's no longer talking about AI. I didn't see the talk, but I just heard that the guy from Facebook got up here and there was a question, how often do you interact with the AI team? And I heard that the answer was never. I don't know. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. That's what I heard. Why? Why? This is a company that bet on Facebook M that made a huge deal on it, and we haven't heard about Facebook M since it launched. And here's the chat platform team. You're like, well, of course, they've got to be working with the AI team. It's chat. They're like, no, we don't work with them at all. So I think that's a key thing is Google, Microsoft, and Amazon are pushing AI because if it's required to win, they've already won. And if it's not required to win, they have already lost because they don't have a popular messenger that people already use. The big value proposition for messengers is you don't have to download anything, you don't have to create a new account, and you don't have to learn a new interface. And if you had to, step one is to download a messenger to get it. Like take the coffee bot for here, for example. I'm sure most of you had to download Kick first. At that point, we should have just built the coffee ordering app. It would have been the exact same amount of friction. You would have had to go download a new app, you would have had to go create a new account, you would have had to go learn a new interface. But for teenagers, that's not true. They all get Kick. We've, we've done a bunch of tests everywhere they go. We've, our bots have exchanged 2 billion messages with users. But what that requires is you have to already have a popular app. Who has a popular consumer chat app in the West? Facebook, WhatsApp, and Kik. And so when you th see why these big companies are pushing AI, it's because they want it to be true, they need it to be true, but the only other big company in this race has completely backed away from it, as it's not telling anybody why which is very smart. Love it. Ted has no opinions or thoughts on bots, so if you guys have any questions for him, we'll try and get a word or two out of him if we can. Uh, do I see any questions from the audience? I see this guy by the pillar there. Yeah, Eric. Hi. Uh, you mentioned bots as the new apps or the new websites. Um, and I was thinking how websites and apps have all these interactive, um, this like rich interactive content. So um, if you want to think about it in terms of bots, like wouldn't it be great if, you know, if I have a, had a ride, had a ride sharing bot that said, hey, here's a, here's a live map of where your driver is, or the CNN bot, like, hey, CNN, can you pull up like a live feed of the, of the uh, event that's going on right now? Uh, so yeah, how do you think about pulling in that sort of rich content that you have on a website or an app into the chat interface, and how do you see that going? 
I think this is a key thing about bots. The killer thing about bots is they have a huge advantage with they have no friction compared to apps. Apps, you know, two minutes and you have the app, you have it set up, you learn how to use it. Bots, it's one second. The disadvantage they have is the experience you can deliver through a bot is very basic compared to an app. But that's going to change. When I watched David Marcus speak at TechCrunch Disrupt two weeks ago, there was something he said that I thought was the most important thing he said that I don't think anybody else recognized, or, or certainly nobody wrote about it. And he was talking about the Hipmunk bot. And what he said was, this bot, now that we have richer suggested responses, now that it can pull in a full web UI, it is definitely better than the mobile web version of their website, but even arguably just as good as, if not better, their native app. So I think this is the key thing. A lot of people are looking at bots today, and they're like, oh, it's so basic. And that's like looking at the web in 1996, 20 years ago, and saying, oh, it's so basic. Yeah, it's basic because it's just the beginning. But Facebook and Kik and all these companies are going to create tools for developers to deliver richer and richer and richer experiences over time. And we're already seeing this. We have some game bots on Kik where you're chatting with a bot, and it's like, hey, it's time for the next level, and sends you web content. You click it, and it feels like you're in a native app. Loads instantly right away. You're playing a game as if it was a native app. The only difference is there was zero friction. Thank you. Next. Uh Oh, gotcha. Eric's got it. All right. Hi, I'm the uh, guy who asked uh, Mikhail at uh, Facebook that question about AI earlier. And uh, just so you know, his answer was that uh, he wasn't going to comment on the connection between the two teams. I expect that there actually is uh, quite a connection uh, between those. But um, I, I like what you said about you're, you're focusing more on the infrastructure and making it simple. And I think that's a key part of success. Uh, Google, if you sort of ignore the AI aspect and just look at the contextualization of the conversation, which the AI really helps, that's, that's really what's there. Uh, what elements uh, are you guys thinking about in terms of contextualizing uh, for bots, in addition to just them communicating with each other, but uh, you know, getting into connecting to devices, bringing more context in, not just from the web, but from the environment and the devices? Does that kind of make sense, or is that like 10 questions that I just asked? I think that makes sense. We don't think about the context at all. Like, we're not building a platform that sort of analyzes and evaluates a user's conversation to bring context and then give that context to developers to do actions on. Because quite frankly, and you saw the, the uproar around Allo, first of all, we think users don't want that. But second of all, we don't think it provides a better experience. The thing we think about is AI is going to be a very powerful tool for chat. It is. AI is going to be a very powerful tool for everything. It's going to help developers deliver a better experience. You know, you, you have millions of people chatting with your bot. You have this massive data set. You use AI and machine learning to build more intelligence and just build a better experience. The key point is we don't think AI is the point. And furthermore, to be like very explicit, we think there should never be no suggested responses on the screen. If you ever show that blinking cursor to a, to a user, you're done. And we have seen that. You know, we built a platform around that uh, two years ago. And you see all the messaging platforms, whether it be Kik or Slack or Facebook Messenger or Telegram, moving that direction. Well, and if I could chime in real quick, I mean, in terms of prompting people to post, that's why we've seen on the Facebook news feed, for example, every single day they say, this friend has a birthday. Be sure to rem you know, tell them happy birthday. Or the uh, debates tonight, be sure to share your thoughts on the debate. So this idea that people need a, a prodding in order to say something, I don't think is unique to messaging. I think we're seeing that in social more broadly. So uh, I don't find that to be surprising if I could jump in. Sorry, this guy's got his hand up here. Thank you. So to me, I think we talk about the evolution with the web, and then we got into the bots and the mobile in between. I kind of see it a little bit with what happened with Passbook, too, where we needed to get an ability to get onto the device right, or, and have that presence. So I kind of saw like the beginnings of, of Passbook, and then Android try to 
do it with, you know, with their Google, whatever the heck it was. But w one of the things that I see when you talk about AI, the way our team is building bots today, it's all a command syntax. And once we figure out what the proper command syntax is, we then wrap an AI layer around it to make it easier for someone that doesn't understand command line type syntaxes today. And then on top of that, we've been layering learnings on what are the commands that are used most often, and then using that as an AI to go and say, okay, what, where can we start to be smarter? Like if we're doing a chat ops type thing, right? So this is more for a DevOps practitioner. When we go and say, okay, what's the current state of our system? Well, the next thing they do is they go and you know, scale an app or they get the logs. So we're using AI to go and see what's the next be best action, right? So we're not just putting AI in there to put it in there. We're learning on, here's the set of you know, standard commands, again, not the blinking cursor. Here's the help that if you want to be structured, you can do that, but then not force someone to be so structured and then they can go and say, you know, give me the status of my app, right? Versus just app status, name of app, right? So I think there's some benefits in there as well. Yeah, we, so we, over time, have made it harder and harder in kick to put in freeform text to where at the point to today, it's, it's almost impossible. Like, you can find it, you can get to it, but if the developer doesn't want you to go there, you won't be able to go there. And the reason we did that is as we moved from freeform text input, which is what we started with, to more and more suggested responses, and developers started building great experience with suggested responses, developers got to a point where they just weren't handling freeform text at all anymore. Basically, a bot would say, you know, hey, do you want a hot coffee or cold coffee? And you'd say something else. And they'd go, sorry, I didn't understand that. Do you want a hot coffee or a cold coffee? And so they just do this infinite loop, like say one of the two things, and we're like, okay, this is stupid. Like, let's just get rid of it. So again, I, I don't want to be, I know a lot of you have bet on AI, and I think AI can provide a lot of value to these experiences over time. My point is what we're seeing succeeding on Kick, what it appears like the other platforms, the directions are moving. And even if you look at WeChat in China, they're all menu-driven experiences. So that's, that's just my only piece of feedback. But don't let that constrain, well, if it's not AI and it's just text, what's the point? You can build really cool experiences with just text. You can augment it with web. And the really cool thing, especially on Kick, is you can make it go viral. We have two things, mentions and invites. Mentions lets you pull a bot into a group chat, like what Roll does. And invites lets your bot spread virally through the Kick network. So when Facebook first launched, you remember, like, for me, one day I got an email from Facebook.com saying you had been tagged in a photo. I was like, what is this Facebook.com? I got tagged in a photo, I got to see. I click in, there's, I create an account, I'd see the photo, and then I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. So then I would upload a photo and I tag my four friends, and they'd all get the email. We've enabled that exact same feature on Kick. So your bot, for example, like the CNN bot could be like, oh, you want to see the next place? You need to let me know the three friends you want to bring with you. Brings up a people picker, you go, okay, I'll bring friend one, two, and three, and then that then gives permission to the bot to then reach out to all those users. Hey, your friend Ted wants to travel around Rio with you. Hi, I'm the CNN bot. I do blah, blah, blah. Um, and I think that's a really unique feature to kick. And it's only something we can do because we have this very lightweight identity. Again, it's not a social profile. It's not a, a phone number. So yeah, if a bot just reaches out to me randomly and says, hey, somebody else said I could talk to you, on kick, that's not only expected, that's sort of the point of the platform. But if that were to happen on something like Facebook Messenger, you'd be like, what? Do they know my birthday now? And how did this happen? And you'd be all outraged. So I think today, if it's just text, you're like, OK, I'm going to use AI. That's the only point of these platforms. That's not going to be true over time. Use AI to augment your bot, but don't make it the point of the experience. Eric, we got says we got time for one more. It looks like this guy's got the, the microphone. I stole it. Um, hey, Seth Louis. Seth Louie from Botless here. Uh, we all know that search and discovery is a huge issue in the bot community. Um, where do you see that going in the future? Do you see that uh, staying on the mobile platform, or do you see there being a uh, web presence for that? We have developers who work on both Kick 
and on Facebook Messenger and on other platforms. And despite Kick being smaller, I have yet to meet a developer who gets more users on Facebook than they do on Kick. I'm sure they exist, I just haven't met them yet. Part of that is our demographic. We have teenagers. Uh, Pervasive Group earlier this year released a study, a third party, that teens spend more time in Kick every day than they do in YouTube or Netflix or Snapchat. So a big part is like they just have more time, they're chatting with more bots um, more often. But on the other side, we spend a lot of time thinking about discovery. You know, Kick is a small company. We're only 100 people, believe it or not. You know, one of the biggest assets, we're 100 full-time people. And we know what it's like to be a small company. And so we really wanted to build a platform where small companies could win over time. And if you look in the App Store today, that's just not true anymore. Nobody's downloading apps. The App Store is completely full. The only people who get distribution are the people who can pay for it. It's game over on the App Store if you're a small guy. And so when we thought about Kick, the big thing we said to ourselves was, OK, the biggest advantage of bots is they have zero friction. So that means that if we could get a good bot, no matter who built it, just a handful of users, those users could then organically spread it to their friends. And the little guy could win. So that's why on Kick, we're the only ones with a bot shop. It's built right in. You can get that first uh, inorganic discovery. But we also have the most virality tools. We have mentions, and we're the only ones with invites. Because of our unique identity system, we can do that. So there are developers here who have built for both Kick and Facebook Messenger. Kick, we think, has way better discovery options because it's something really important to us as a smaller company. Um, but you should try it out for yourself. Uh, thank you all so much for your attention. And Ted, thank you for the insight. That was awesome. So enjoy the rest thank of the conference. You.